Today is a very special day. Today we are going to hit 200 days in our Minecraft hardcore world. Now if you weren't here for the first 100 days, you should definitely go check that video out now. But for right now, we are going to pick up right where we left off and hit 200 days in Minecraft hardcore. The very first thing that I wanted to do was get more netherite. You can never have enough netherite. So I went farming for some ancient debris and I actually made a video on this. So some of this footage you'll see in the previous video but I actually just wanted to get more netherite not only to get a netherite pickaxe but also to get lodestone that's right lodestone is a little piece of block that you can track your location you'll see in a minute don't even worry about it but I wanted to get lodestone it's a very useful navigation tool to never lose your way and I get lost really easily in the nether so that's exactly what I did was I gathered enough ancient debris to get more netherite to then build lodestone you have to have smooth or chiseled stone all around a netherite ingot to make load stone so that's what I did I made it and I placed it in the nether and then if you right click with a compass that compass will always lead you to that load stone which is incredible so I named it my nether compass and we went on with our day the next thing that I did was go all the way to our nether fortress to get some wither skeleton skulls so that we could fight the wither again because at the very end of our 100 minecraft days video I fought the wither on the 100th day and I decided to do that again right now so I could get multiple beacons of course in order to make a beacon you have to have a nether star which drops from the wither and so that's what I decided to do was fight him again and it went just as smoothly as the first time I'm kind of amazing at doing this I could have as many beacons as I wanted this is freaking easy so we did that and we got another nether star so we could go and create more beacons but creating beacons was not what I needed to do first I needed to remodel my house this was a seriously seriously basic house like I like the treehouse idea and that sort of thing but really it's too basic that's what I decided to do was completely remodel our house we're gonna use a lot of different types of wood everything looks way too similar that was one thing I didn't do anywhere near enough of in our hundred minecraft days video was make things look better everything looked way the same it just no interior design there was no flair there was no creativeness so that's what I spent the next lot of days doing was creating an amazing house lots of birch wood lots of jungle wood planks some stuff that actually is creative rather than just the same old types of materials and the same old woods I decided to make something incredible and man that's exactly what we did our house was looking good I had a lot of really cool interior design ideas I had a fireplace on the bottom floor it looked incredible I mean look at that thing that's absolutely beautiful three floors worth of something that's just incredibly innovative loved it so much it looked amazing from every angle we had the stripped wood we we had the birch wood, we had jungle wood, we had glass. It looked so dang good, and the interior looked even better. I was super, super proud of this whole setup. I'm very excited about it. It was a really cool house. It was a great idea to upgrade because our previous house, like I said, it was just not enough whatsoever. The master bedroom was located on the third floor, and I went super creative on this floor. I really wanted the master bedroom to look like a thing of beauty, and it did. I think it looks amazing. I was really stoked about this because interior design was the one thing I never was able to do very much of in our 100 Minecraft days video so I was really stoked to make my surrounding areas just look so gorgeous and so beautiful so this house was definitely needed and it was a lot of fun to build but the next thing that I wanted to do in this world was something we also didn't do any of in our 100 Minecraft days video and that is to make a farm the whole entire purpose of this next little segment is to make an iron farm which is what we did we perfected the iron farm the whole idea was to have a big platform and have four chambers three of the chambers were going to be for villagers and then the one chamber in the middle was going to be for a zombie when these villagers see that zombie they're going to freak out and they're going to need to spawn an iron golem now on the second floor of this build will be where the iron golems spawn and once they spawn they are going to be spawned in water on top of where the villagers are located that water is going to push them down into a little platform down below where they will burn in lava but before I built any of that 
that. I needed a transportation system to get us up to the platform. This platform had to be high up in the air so that the iron golems could only spawn in one place, which is above the villagers. If they spawn in other places, it makes it an issue. So we had to build this high up, and in order to get the villagers high up, I needed a transportation system. So we used kelp and soul sand to make this little water elevator up to the top of the tree. This is exactly how we were going to transport the villagers. It was super safe and super efficient, which is exactly what I needed for this build. Now, here are the chambers. Three of them, like I said, are for villagers, and then the one in the middle is going to be for the zombie. Once the villagers see the zombie, then they're going to spawn the iron golem on top, and then he'll fall into some lava, and when he dies, his iron will be collected by hoppers. In the middle of this, I decided to go ahead and put some lodestone over by the library or the enchanting system and name it the home compass. I only had one netherite ingot left, so that's what I used it on. And then we had to go very far away and find a village that was nearby our spawn so we could actually lure the villagers back to home and then put them in this chamber, which is why I placed the lodestone and made it our home compass so that I could transport the villagers back. And this took a long time, but I had to lure them with the lectern, I had to get them into a boat and then travel by sea all the way back home. Once I got this villager back though, it was time to transport him up through the elevator and put him in one of his chambers. Again, we needed three villagers. We had to do this three separate times and it was quite the process. It definitely was quite the process, but I decided to perfect it. We ran into a little issue though. The villager didn't want to run up the stairs to go into his chamber, so I had to put him in a minecart and, and let that happen and like I said, this was just a mess. It would, these villagers do not want to cooperate whatsoever. Look at this dude. He doesn't even want any part of doing this. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be in a chamber. Well, he doesn't have an option. Unfortunately for him, I was going to put him in a chamber, whether he liked it or not. Hey, get, 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 get in there, Billy Bob. Come on. You got this. You got this. You get, you can do it. I promise you can. Look at how stubborn he's being. It was so difficult to put these villagers into the freaking chambers. But eventually, I just had to put him in a boat, drive the boat right over the chamber hole, and get him in there. Aha! I got you. That's right. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, once we got the three villagers all the way into their chambers, which took a long time, then we got a zombie and put him into the water elevator and threw him all the way up just like that. Look at that. Boom, baby. And then I followed the zombie up there, and I was going to have to put him in his chamber, which is hard because it was just one small little hole. And it was, it was really hard to actually direct him in there, but we did it. Now, in order to get this zombie to not die, there had to be water in that hole, which we did, and we had to name him so that he didn't despawn. Now it was time to build the platform above the villagers and the zombie, which is exactly where the iron golems were going to spawn. There's going to be water on this platform, leading the iron golems off of the edge, and then below the edge is going to be the platform where they would fall into the lava. But first, we had to complete the top edge of where they were going to be spawning. We had to fill it with water, we had to make sure there was fences all around, and of course, we had to make sure it looked good. So we were using nether blocks. We were using blackstone and netherrack fences. It was looking good. Once I was finished building the top platform, it was now time to build the platform where these iron golems were going to fall on, which is exactly what I was doing. I was building fences over the hoppers so that when the iron golems fell on top of the lava, the lava wouldn't burn the iron and actually fall on to the hoppers, which is exactly what happened. Now when the iron golems spawned on top of the villagers, they would fall through the water and fall into the lava pit and then die, and their iron would be collected by the hoppers. So I could just go over to my trusty chest and loot all of the iron. It worked surprisingly well. Of course there were just a few hiccups while I was building this. Some iron golems would spawn on the dirt blocks and I had to hit them off of the edge and that sort of thing, but this one particular iron golem was not playing nicely. And I had to start killing him, but he almost killed me! We almost lost this this entire world due to one iron golem. That's right, I was scared. I was so scared. He was throwing me all over the place. It was a scary battle. It, w it almost felt like a boss battle. This was really close. I was not prepared to be taking this much damage, especially not from an iron golem, but it all worked out in the end. The reason we had to kill this particular iron golem is because if he was around, then more wouldn't spawn. I realized it was so efficient to have that water elevator that I wanted to implement it in my own home. So that's exactly what we did. We built the elevator out of quartz blocks, and then we used the elevator for our very own home. And let me tell you, this was the best idea. I don't know why I've been using the vines for this long. I should have done this water elevator a long time ago, and it is so incredibly efficient to just blast me all the way to the top, because I never climbed down the vines anyways. I now don't have the option to, but 
but I just jump off our diving board all the time anyways. The entire point of this 200 Minecraft days video is to fight the Ender Dragon on the 200th day. Now I am nowhere near prepared to do that. I didn't do any preparation during our first 100 days, so I had to start prepping just a little bit. We went into the nether and started killing some Endermen to grab their pearls so that we could get some eyes of Ender to lead us to where the Ender portal is. So that's exactly what we did for the next little while. We went and killed a bunch of Endermen to get as many Ender pearls as we possibly could, as well as I also wanted to grab a few Ender chests. We were going to be bringing an ender chest full of potions with us to the ender battle, but I decided that it looked amazing in my room. Instead of two normal chests, we were going to throw down one ender chest in our room as well to complete the interior design aspect. It looked phenomenal. Now was time for another farm of sorts. We were going to build a villager breeder so that I didn't have to go through the process of bringing the villagers all the way from the village all the way back home. It was so tedious. So instead of doing that, I decided to make a villager breeder and our very own backyard. Now, the whole entire purpose of this villager breeder was to have a chamber full of two villagers and then have a composter so that one of the villagers was a farmer. In the chamber, there was going to be cropped land full of potatoes that this farmer could dig up and then once the villagers have potatoes, they do their thing. Now, once the villagers do their thing, there is a little gate that is blocked off by a hatch. The villagers don't see the hatch, but they see what's beyond it, which is a bunch of beds. And of course, villagers are attracted to beds. So once the little baby villager sees this, he's going to try to run through, and since there's a hatch, the grown-up villagers can't run through, but the baby villager can. He'll run through right into a hole that leads to this little area right here, and that's how we're going to breed our villagers. But in order to breed villagers, we do need villagers, of course, so I went back to the same village that we got the villagers for the iron farm. And I decided to build another portal and then have that portal lead all the way to our nether hub at home. That way the transportation for these villagers was going to be a lot quicker. I'm talking a lot quicker. So we did the exact same thing that we did with the nether fortress and all of those other areas that we've linked to our nether hub. We dug to the roof of the nether. We went back through the portal, we went home, and then once we got home, we dug in the roof of the nether all the way to that portal. But in order to do that, we of course need the coordinates of where the villager portal was. So that's exactly what I did. I marked down those coordinates, I went all the way back home, and then once home, we dug all the way back to the villager outpost. It was genius, and it was a lot more efficient for navigating those villagers back home. Once I had successfully tunneled to the villager your portal it was time to actually build a railroad system because once these villagers got through the portal there was no way I was going to be able to successfully lure them all the way back home so I decided to just make a minecart or a railroad system in the nether all the way over to our ice slide so once they got to the end of this rail system they would go into the boat on the ice slide and we would connect them all the way back home it was it was pretty genius if I do say so myself it was a great system it took a little bit of time Time, but it worked out pretty well in my favor so I decided to drive the boat all the way to the nether portal to get the villager through and of course it wasn't wide enough so we had to widen the nether portal and get that villager through and once he got through I was a little bit surprised at what I found because w what I found was at the very end of the minecart system there was already a villager there and I was really confused but hey it worked out for me now I had two villagers already in the nether which is what I needed in the first place anyways I now had two villagers in boats right outside of our villager breeding station, ready to go. And what I needed to do next was actually soil the dirt and plant some potatoes and get the villagers in there. So that's exactly what I did. I then grabbed all of the iron out of the iron farm and turned them into blocks, which would later be used for a beacon. And then I went exploring for all different kinds of wood. And I found pillagers as well. I found a pillager outpost, which of course I had to take out, but the main reason for for this mission was so that I could get as much wood as possible to create cool things with different woods other than just jungle wood at home. I came across this chest and found a bottle of enchanting, but other than that, there was nothing too special. And when I went back to my village that I was getting all of my villagers from, there was a raid going on, so we had to take care of that. That's what I get for killing all of those pillagers, I guess. So I took a little while to take care of this raid, and it was fun, it was okay, but I had a mission to do. I wasn't all about doing the raid, I was all about getting these ender eyes, so that I could go and find the ender portal. Even though it was only day 140, I still wanted to link up the ender portal 
with our nether hub, and that can take some time, so we went on a journey following the ender eyes to the ender portal, and we found this little nether thing, this little leaked nether thing, I don't even know what to call this, but we found some good stuff in there, and that was fun, and then we finally found the ender portal. And like I said, the main objective of going to the end portal right now was not to go fight the ender dragon. It was to link our nether hub with the end portal so that we could always come back super quick. And it was actually a lot closer to our house than I thought. So it really wasn't too far to begin with. So tunneling in the roof of the nether was actually not a challenge whatsoever. We didn't have to go far at all to get all the way back to the ender portal. It was really nice. It was pretty close to our house as it was. Once I got everything linked up it was now time for a massive project I had a huge vision for what I wanted our nether hub to look like and it was not what it currently looked like I wanted the roof to be full of bedrock so we dug out all of the nether rack on the roof until we hit bedrock and then I wanted to make some huge changes the whole idea of our nether hub it was going to be a little bit of a circle and that's exactly what I was gonna make it took a very long time we're talking over almost 20 days in Minecraft to do this but I wanted big archways I wanted lava towers I wanted some really cool looking things so we got to work right away this was the lava tower the first one that we created it was gonna look amazing there was this huge pillar and in the middle it was lava I used blackstone I used a nether rack I used obsidian I used so many different cool blocks to make our nether hub look incredible we used basalt we used crimson we used the blue nether stuff it all looked incredible we had quartz stairs leading up to our ice slide and of course we had quartz stairs leading up to our nether portal as well it was all looking very glamorous it took a very long time to collect all of the materials it took even longer to make sure that I didn't die doing it and I also took a very long time to plan out how I wanted it to look I looked up a lot of interior design in Minecraft videos just seeing what I could do to make sure everything looked a lot better but by the time I was done it was looking very glamorous our nether hub now looked completely different I was so proud of it. Like I said, I'm actually pretty good at interior design in Minecraft, but I didn't get much of a chance to really play with it at all during our 100 Minecraft days. So I'm really glad that this episode I was really able to focus on interior design and making everything in my world look absolutely top notch. So we went back to our villager farm to see if it was working. I was actually going to lure a villager out and make it a librarian and get mending. But where was the villager? It wasn't working! I was so frustrated. I thought it was working great. I thought the villagers were mating and there was going to be tons of villagers and there wasn't. But our iron farm was. Our iron farm was working wonders. We were now getting pretty close to the beacon. I chose a spot right across the beach from our house where I was going to build the iron block pyramid. Now, for those of you that don't know, a beacon has to be on top of a pyramid of iron blocks, gold blocks, diamond blocks, any kind of block of mineral it has to be on top of. So I built the pyramid and then I built the beacon and we were going to put it right on top of this pyramid. Now, this is going to give us the best of the best boosts, the best of the best stuff that you can get from a beacon I was now going to get because it was on the top of a pyramid. I was very excited about it. So I gave the beacon an iron ingot and I went to work. At first, I gave myself a jump boost just to play around with it and see how it was. The jump boost was awesome. I was jumping super high, but then I decided to give myself haste instead. And then, like I said before, the theme of this video was making everything look incredible. So I used a salt around the pyramid and then glass on top of it and then I decided to go with black stained glass to make the beacon laser look black I thought it looked very nifty and very cool I was very proud of this pyramid that we made and again back to the subject of this video making the interior design look absolutely incredible the jungle wood planks and the jungle fences really JDO that's what we were going with I decided to rip up the floors of our entire balcony and turn it into dark wood instead and then I was gonna rip up the fences of the entire balcony and make it birch wood instead So we went on a birch wood farm and decided to go for that. I thought it looked incredible It really spiced up the place. Everything was looking miraculous Not only did our house look incredible now, but so did the balcony So did the nether hub and all of our farms had a certain glint to it that just made it all come together and look good mm -mm. 
mm, our world was looking incredible, it was now time to go and see what was wrong with our villager breeder. I decided I actually had to feed the villagers first for them to do their thing, which is what I did and heart started coming up. Boom, it was gonna work. That little villager baby was gonna go for the beds and fall into the hole instead, but it never happened. I still to this day am confused on why my villager breeder doesn't work. I replaced the beds, I gave them a bell, I gave them everything they needed, and they still wouldn't breed. So I gave up on it and I decided to build some potions to get ready for our ender battle. That's right, we were going to do a potion of night vision, a potion of slow falling, and then potions of strength. The slow falling was so that when the ender dragon bumped me up into the air, I would fall slowly and nothing bad would happen to me. And then of course the potion of strength was to give me an extra strength boost and the potion of night vision was to make me see in the dark. As part of the preparation for the ender dragon battle, I needed more XP so that I could get a better bow, enchant a better bow for better stuff on it. So I looked up a simple XP farm on YouTube and this was what I was going to do. A chest was going to feed potatoes into a furnace which also fed them into a hopper which fed it into another chest. When the hopper that was connected to the chest at the bottom was filled with those potatoes, it was now getting me a lot of XP when I grabbed them, which it did. I leveled up two levels by grabbing three potatoes. But the issue was, once I started grabbing those potatoes even more, the farm didn't work. So it was kind of a bust, so I decided to go with a more traditional XP farm, which is exactly what we did. We built this huge tower out of cobblestone that was going to spawn a bunch of mobs, and then they were going to all funnel down into one area, and I was going to hit them with my sword and get a bunch of XP all at once. This farm did take a little bit of time to build, but I did it the right way. It looked good, and it was a sure working farm. I knew it was going to work. I just had to put in the time to build it first. I realized when I went to the very top of the farm and built a pillar all the way up and waited there, a ton of mobs would spawn underneath me. And then by the time I got all the way down to the bottom, they would all be waiting there for me. So that's exactly what I did. I built a huge pillar on the top of the farm, got all the way to the top and just chilled there for a little bit. And all of these mobs were down there waiting for me once I got all the way to the bottom. And I got a lot of XP this way. It was a very great way to do the farm. But the only thing was, I had to go to the very top of the farm and build this huge pillar every single time I wanted to use the farm, which is not something that I was going to do. So I had a solution for that. I built all the way to the top of the farm once more. And instead of destroying that pillar, I just jumped down and built a staircase from the bottom on the ground all the way up to the top of the pillar. And I decided to use rails again. So now I could ride a minecart all the way to the top of the pillar and just wait there whenever I I wanted to use the XP farm and then I could jump down and then of course continue to kill the mobs down below and now I don't have to worry about having to get up there every single time I just had a minecart system that would lead me up to the top of this farm it worked great I had a great time doing it I, I really think it was a success but unfortunately what wasn't a success was us getting a new and better bow I couldn't get for the life of me a better bow that had more power but we were ready to go. It was now time to go and fight the ender dragon. I had an ender chest full of the potions that we made. I had my bow, my sword, my pickaxe. I had building blocks. I had meat. I had everything that we needed, even a water bucket to keep the endermen away from us. And it was now time to go all the way to our ender portal and do this thing. I was excited. I was ready to go. Keep in mind, everybody, I have never actually fought the ender dragon in my life. In all of my time playing Minecraft, not once have I ever fought the ender dragon. I know it's crazy, but it's true. It was now time to break that streak and fight the ender dragon. I put all of the potions inside of my inventory and I got ready to go. I didn't really know what to expect. I was a little bit nervous, but I was ready to go. I drank some night vision and slow falling potions and we went on through the portal. We had a really bad spawn. We were super high up in the air, but luckily I had my slow falling potion and a water bucket. So I was able to jump off of that platform and get ready to go. Now, even though I have never fought the Ender Dragon before, I had seen other people do it, so I knew what to do. I had to take out his healing stations. But the thing was, it was a lot harder than I had actually anticipated it to be. It took a lot of time. Uh, this was a very, this was a very long boss battle. I'm cutting out a lot of it. It took me quite a bit of time to beat the Ender Dragon, but I did get some dragon's breath out of it. I used some empty glass bottles and grabbed some of that. 
and then I continued on breaking his healing stations. Now I didn't realize it was going to be such a large explosion when I destroyed this, so I was right on top of this one when I destroyed it in the cage, and I almost died. We had a really, really close call here. One heart left, oh my goodness. This slow falling potion was saving my butt, I am so glad I brought that along with me. Now that we had destroyed all of the healing stations, it was time to shoot the dragon, and oh my gosh, it was so hard, I was really struggling to kill this freaking dragon and actually hit it with my arrows. I decided to get a little bit more height advantage with my building blocks, which seemed to work a little bit better for me, but it was still a very slow process. Keep in mind, it's my first time, guys. Please don't make fun of me, but I was getting it done. Slowly but surely, I was whittling away at the health of the Ender Dragon. It was just taking a lot more time than it should have, but it's okay. It's not a timed race. I was just trying to defeat the Ender Dragon, and that's it. There were a couple of close calls along the way though. I got launched into the air while I didn't have slow falling potion a few times and it was really scary. But I was really starting to get the hang of it and it was working well for me. I decided to go to the top of one of his healing towers and shoot him from there, which is where I did a lot of damage in a short amount of time. That was definitely the move. And then we finally did it, ladies and gentlemen. We killed the Ender Dragon. We did it. Our first time ever. And it was in hardcore. I got so much XP from this Ender Dragon. We got all the way up to level, guess what? You won't guess it. I guarantee it. Level 69. That's right, baby. Uh-huh. We got all the way up to level 69, which was going to help a ton. I was going to go get a bow with power 4 on it finally rather than power 3. Or at least that was the plan. But first, I had, I had to get the Ender Egg. Of course, why would I not get the Ender Dragon's Egg? So that's exactly what I did. Now, this is incredible. I really had a great time with this series so far. The first 100 days, I learned so much about Minecraft that I had never really known before. I was young when Minecraft came out. I was part of the generation that played Minecraft like crazy when it first came out, but I never really played Minecraft. I would start worlds and not really go very far and then start new worlds and kind of forget about them. But this was the first time that I really stuck with a world. Not only is this the longest time that I've stuck with a world before, but it was also the world where I got the most accomplished. I mean, look at us. We've defeated the Wither and we've defeated the Ender Dragon now. But it was now time to go on a grind with our newly acquired XP. I wanted a bow that was good and finally we got one. Power 4, Unbreaking 3, and Infinity. It took me almost 30 levels to get through all of those bows and to get one with those requirements. I placed the Ender Dragon's Egg at the very end of our balcony, and now it was time. As I was saying before, this is the most I've ever accomplished in a Minecraft world before. I'm so proud of it, and I've learned so much about Minecraft along the way. I've had so much fun with this 200 Minecraft Days video. I sincerely hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like to see 300 days in Minecraft Hardcore. Who knows what we'll accomplish? The possibilities are endless.